Deion Sanders and Colorado are heading to the Big 12 in 2024. So what will it look like when they get to the Big 12? And I think it's very fair to ask the question, could Colorado potentially be set to take over the Big 12? Because remember, Texas and OU are leaving the conference. Two of the most talented teams year in and year out based on the recruiting rankings are leaving for the SEC. So for Colorado, you look at what Coach Prime is on the recruiting trail, and we all are very much so on the same page. Dude can acquire talent. I mean, look at what he did via the transfer portal. Has pretty much a whole new team in Boulder, Colorado this coming season. So you also look at where he has ties now and where there's talent at the high school level. And I think it's pretty fair to have some high expectations for Colorado moving to the Big 12 for a couple of reasons. Going back to the ties he has, though, California, not that far from Colorado. For Coach Prime to get to the West Coast and check out some of those top high schools, the Trinity League is out there, De La Salle is out there. Like, There's a lot of top dudes that play in the state of California that Coach Prime has pretty reasonable access to. On top of that, he's got ties in the state of Texas, another one of the top states when it comes to high school football. And he coached in the state of Texas. He lived in the state of Texas for a long time. Like, he's got ties there. He knows a network there and is going to be able to recruit there. Third piece of this, the third place he has ties is the state of Florida. He's from the state of Florida. He played at Florida State. You don't think Coach Prime can walk into the living room of a high school four-star, five-star and tell him, listen, I was in your shoes. I'm from the state of Florida. I know what it's like to be where you are right now, but I'm telling you, come with me out to Boulder, Colorado. I'm going to develop you. I'm going to put you in position to be successful and to do what I did in college and eventually get to the NFL. Like That's where you want to be. And Cormani McLean, his recruitment is a prime example of this. No pun intended. Cormani McLean, when asked why he chose Colorado, he's like, I want to be in the same predicament as Coach Prime. I want to be in the same situation, gold jacket, all that. I'm paraphrasing, but those were the bullet points of what he said. Cormani McLean, kid from Florida, going out to Boulder, Colorado to follow Coach Prime. So I think he has that pitch down just fine. So with that being said, I think Coach Prime at the high school level is set up for success based on where he has access. We'll talk about this more in a second, but make sure you're subscribed right here. We talk ball every single day on this channel. We're live on Tuesdays, live on Thursdays, 11 a.m. Eastern. Subscribe so you don't miss a minute of the hard count. Also follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram at JD Paquel. Okay, so that's the access that Coach Prime has, right? Like he's got those ties. I mean, UCF's also going to be in the Big 12, and that probably also helps the pitch for Florida. They're going to be playing schools in Texas. He has a network in Texas. You hear what I'm saying? There's a lot of reasons as to why Coach Prime is going to be dangerous in the Big 12 Conference. When it comes to acquiring talent at the high school level, we've already seen what he can do through the portal. But with Colorado now moving from the Pac-12 to the Big 12, I think you juice up that opportunity for him to recruit even more. And the reason why that is the television deal the Big 12 has in place. If you were to stay in the Pac-12, you don't have a firm answer for these recruits when it comes to how their families can watch them if they're not able to be at the game, if they have to watch a broadcast. Yeah, we don't know. We don't have a TV deal in place right now. Times are kind of tough if we're the Pac-12 conference. Might have to watch the CW. Might have to get a streaming service. I don't know. Big palms up. There's no guarantee you can give them. Whereas for the Big 12 Conference now, for Coach Prime, you can assertively walk into a living room of any family and tell them, listen, you're going to be able to watch your kid, whether you're at the game or not, whether you're in the state of Florida, whether you're in the state of Alabama, wherever you are. If you can't be in attendance for a game, you can turn on ESPN, you can turn on Fox, and you can watch every single one of his football games, and 0% of them will be cut off by a rerun of Family Matters or Full House or whatever, whatever other classic phenomenal television show, but probably would upset you if it's the fourth quarter of your kid's game and it gets cut short because it's on a different channel. And they've got their own restrictions, right? Like, that's not a situation you walk into if you're Coach Prime in Colorado. You don't have to deal with that mess anymore now. So that governor that was potentially on their recruiting apparatus, no longer there. Coach Prime and company starting to gain some steam here with the resources they're going to have and the lack of obstacles they're going to have recruiting from Colorado in the Big 12 Conference now. I'm telling you, Coach Prime, they're going to be dangerous when it comes to acquiring talent. Now... Who could they be competing with, with Oklahoma and Texas leaving? Two schools, I think, are at the forefront of that discussion. As it stands right now, UCF entering the Big 12 this coming season. And they have, similar to what I talked about with Coach Prime, a hotbed of talent all around their university. Right? I mean, Coach Prime, 
he has ties in Florida. I think he can make really strong pitches to kids in the state of Florida. But there's going to be some kids that just want to stay home. And UCF used to have to make that pitch and say, hey, come blaze your own trail, but we're a G5 school. Now there's no more of that for them. Now they can say, we're a Power 5 school, come blaze your own trail at a Power 5 school, playing against the best in the country. And I understand there's probably a little bit of discussion with the best in the country because you still got Florida right there and they're playing the SEC. But you hear what I'm saying. Hotbed of talent in the state of Florida. Also, you have a, a head coach that has one at the highest level in Gus Malzahn. Uh, he knows what he's doing at UCF. So they could be an obstacle for Coach Prime and company when they try and take top talent out of the state of Florida. And then Texas Tech, we talk about them a lot on this show. Joy McGuire, he's cooking with gas now. At the time of us recording this, they have a top 25 class in the on three industry team recruiting rankings. Number one class in the new Big 12 for the 2024 cycle. So what they're doing right now is just absolutely taking advantage of that network that Joy McGuire has, having been a high school football coach in the state of Texas for a very long time at a really high level. Those relationships, they're really capitalizing on. So I think Colorado, UCF, Texas Tech, all three of those schools, you're probably jockeying for a position. But the two caveats for Colorado taking over are as follows. One, they got to win football games. Right? And a lot of that rests on Shadur Sanders this coming season and probably the season after that. If Shadur Sanders can be able to elevate this offense and can give that defense some time. And if he can just straight up make enough plays to make up for some of the things that they're still putting together on the offensive line or maybe trying to mesh schematically, like if Shadur Sanders can be that dude that wills Colorado forward, recruits are going to see that. They're going to see the big picture of Colorado having success early and say, okay, I want to be a part of that. Because a lot of people right now, the negative recruiting against Colorado, I guarantee you, it's, well, you haven't seen them do it at the Power 5 level yet. Yeah, I did it at Jackson State. That's great. Jackson State is not playing in the Big 12 Conference. They're not playing in the Pac-12 Conference as Colorado's going to play this coming season. There's going to be a lot of whispers and recruits' ears saying, well, can he do it at the Power 5 level? Are you sure you want to commit to a guy that's never done it at the Power 5 level? That's the negative recruiting right now. But if Shadur Sanders in Colorado are able to get some momentum and get some you know, good faith in place with what they do in 2023, whole conversation changes around Colorado. And probably the whole perception around Colorado changes for a lot of these recruits that maybe were on the fence about coming to Boulder and playing for Coach Prime. That's the first caveat. The second caveat is impossible to know right now. I'm going to say this quickly because you never know with the tectonic plates of conference realignment, but I don't think the Big 12 is done adding teams, and it's a very large question mark. I don't think it's going to happen because I think there's probably more smoke around the Big 10, but Oregon, if they join the Big 12, that that Nike resources they have, what Dan Lanning's building out there, the continuity that they've been able to put together on that roster and, and the, the progress in the recruiting trail, like... Oregon would be a very, very big obstacle for Colorado. If nothing else, it would crowd that room for trying to grab top talent. Whereas right now, I think Colorado's in a really good position. You wonder about Washington. Whoever else gets added to the Big 12 is a thing you probably evaluate when that gets there. But Oregon's the one school I would really take a look at. And that's a very big question mark, but that's the one I would really look hard at if I'm trying to gauge where Colorado sits in the recruiting pecking order for grabbing some of this top talent across the country. But regardless, if talent acquisition is the name of the game, Coach Prime has proven now on paper throughout the course of an offseason that he can win that game. They got to put it together. They got to have some sort of, like I said already, some good faith for these recruits going forward. But if they can make it mesh early on, it is going to turn the entire college football landscape on its head. And when they get to the Big 12, from the access he has to these kids, the network he has in Texas and, and the pitch he can make being in the state of Florida or having grown up in the state of Florida, rather, being from the state of Florida, that's going to make him really, really dangerous. And they no longer have to deal with, well, we don't know if you're going to be playing on the CW, if you'll be playing you know, on a gas station pump at your local gas stations where you got to catch the Pac-12 games. You don't have to talk about that anymore. You can say, ESPN, Fox, got us. You're going to be able to watch your kid play. Come to Colorado. So Colorado now... Going to be a very intriguing team to watch as they move to the Big 12 in 2024. Coach Prime is not hard to find. We'll see what happens for them when it comes to acquiring talent. Make sure you subscribe right here. We talk college football all year round. 
No time like the present to subscribe. We are less than a month away from the beautiful reality that is week zero of the college football season. Don't want you to miss a minute of what we're doing right here on the Author YouTube channel. All right, so we're going to keep this party rolling, and we will see y'all next time. Hey, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.